Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the AOE QRP Pants Match. Hi folks, and welcome to another episode of The Art of Engineering. Since building the uh, QMX, I've been feeling the call of the wild. I really want to get out and do some portable operating. And in the past, I had built a, an inverted V antenna, which I intended to take out with me in the field. It was a rather large and quite cumbersome, and it didn't really cover a lot of bands. So it would have been stuck on 40 meters. And I wanted something that's going to get me onto a few different bands. So I started investigating antennas and I decided to go with a non-resident end-fed antenna. So a random wire end-fed. And like a lot of things in ham radio, uh, it's a bit misleading, the term random wire, because uh, when one thinks of random, you think of just uh, cutting any length. And that's definitely a recipe or could be a recipe for disaster if you're making one of these antennas. So when they say random or non-resonant, what they really mean is not resonant on any of the hand frequencies. And by doing that, you're provided the opportunity to be presented a feed point impedance that's workable. And uh, it's quite a, a, a complex thing, uh, understanding nodes and antinodes and um, current voltages on, on antennas and all that good stuff. Uh, I am by no means an expert. I know the uh, channel is called The Art of Engineering, and I've had some criticism in the past from people who have said that I'm presenting myself as an engineer. Anyone that knows anything about the channel will know that it started as a, I guess, a journal, a, a a vlog of my adventures as a mature age engineering student, which happened a couple of years ago. I'm an art teacher and I'm art trained. I went to art school, hence the title of the, the channel, The Art of Engineering. And while I was studying for that degree, the ham radio bug bit again, 30 years after I'd given it away. Um, the last time I'd operated was basically just after I left high school when I was 18. And I uh, spent time at sea as a radio officer. So radio was not the sort of thing I wanted to do as a hobby, but boy, am I that. And my wife would say obsessed, and uh, I would have to agree with her. Anyway, I am blabbing on. What I needed to do was get an antenna in the air and some way of matching that antenna. So what did I do? I did what I always do, and that's troll the internet. And I managed to find. Once again, something on uh, Peter Parker, VK3YE's channel. So uh, I will be talking about this design here. Now, the original plan was to build a, a simple SWR bridge that you tune for minimum brightness. What I ended up doing was going with another one of Peter's more simple ideas. Keeping in mind that uh, the QMX, unlike the, uh, the QCX, has SWR protection. And you can set it for whatever level you want. I've got it set at three, which I think is what it defaults to. And so if the SWR goes above three, the transmitter shuts down. And so what I ended up doing was I ended up building, I'll just grab it here, a transmatch. And I'm hoping that's in screen. I would have no idea. Hold on, I'm going to look in the mirror and see if I can see. Yes, I'm using the mirror at the back of the room. That's the, uh, the transmatch. You've got a number of inductors that you can select on the side and you tune uh, for maximum brightness on the LED if you can see it. But like I was saying, and like I will demonstrate in this video, the QMX has an SWR bridge in it with an SWR indicator on the display and power as well. And it's not 100% accurate, but it's, but it's pretty good. And I will, if I decide to take my QCX Mini out, which uh, does not have protection, uh, what I will do is I will probably take the Nano VNA out with me and use the Nano to make sure that it's an acceptable VSWR before I transmit into it. So Nano VNA, it's not an expensive piece of equipment to take away. It's only 50 or so dollars. So if we wreck it, we wreck it. I'm slowly going to get a kit put together. I think for the uh, QCX Mini, and if I ever manage to get the, uh, the QMX, the smaller version, finished, 
I will be going for a smaller, lighter battery so I can build a SOTA type rig to take away. But the plan is to do some kayak camping. So taking away the, uh, the QMX in the, in the kayak is not really going to be a big problem for me. I, you know, usually put about 50 liters of beer in the, in the kayak. So I'll just have to take 20 liters of beer instead and, uh, suffer a little bit. Anyway, um, let's get on with the video and uh, we will uh, have a look at uh, the trials and tribulations of this transmatch and this portable setup. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the GQRP.com turns for inductance in micro Henry's. And it, uh, along, the, along the top here gives you the types of uh, toroids, T37-2, 37-6, etc., etc. et cetera. And then going down gives you number of turns for a given amount of micro Henry's. So, for instance, for the first one, we needed our T37 2 red coil to get us to one uh, micro Henry approximately. So that's uh, 16 turns. And uh, for the last one, because I didn't have a larger core, because the T37 2 will only go up to just over four. I've uh, put uh, two of them in series. They're close together, so I'm not sure exactly what the inductance is. But like I said, it's not a critical value. So as long as I can get roughly one micro Henry steps, I'm more than happy with uh, how this is going to go. To all the people that uh, are worried about winding toroids, as you saw, there's plenty of information about how to wind them. You could test the, the values. If they're critical, it's probably a good thing to do because quality of these uh, toroids could vary. But this is just an approximation. And like I said, the GQRP showed you as a good uh, rule of thumb to go by. So this one here, to get to four microhenries, I am going to need uh, 30... Oh God, I can't remember. I'm going to need 32. What I normally do is feed one end in and bend it over, trap it with my finger so we get make it nice and tight. And then it's kind of like sewing. Uh, you just feed the piece of wire through. Each time it goes through, it's one. So we've already got one through because each time it goes through the center, that's one turn. So that's now two. And you pull it nice and tight. And you just keep going until you get to the number that you require. Three. And it becomes quite meditative after a while, <laughs> believe it or not. And because I've got my microphone on my glasses, <laughs> can't see what I'm doing. Four. And every now and then I just uh, squeeze them up against the other ones. five you get the uh the drift and once you get them all on there you can spread them out if you want to evenly that's probably uh, the best course of action but this is going to be probably completely full it's very close to the maximum number of turns you'll get on this uh, toroid and here's our wound toroids one micro henry two micro henry four micro henry and this is our eight micro henry and you can see here that uh, we had to series them up to get the uh, necessary inductance. We are going away for the uh, weekend, so it's going to be a little bit of a pause in the production of this antenna coupler, but we've marked it up for uh, the holes that need to happen, or most of the holes. Got our switches, got most of our parts. We are going to get, have to get some higher wattage resistors because I've only got uh, two watts worth of dissipation for the SWR bridge, and I think it's going to be a little bit uh, under value. I think we need to get to at least five watts. Antenna and counterpoise. We now have all our holes drilled. Got a small piece of PCB for the SWR detecting circuit. And 
we've uh, got a little polyvaria cap capacitor attached that's been scavenged out of an old radio and uh, hopefully when this is all done we will have a transmatch a qrp transmatch for portable operation fingers crossed okay a little bit of information about the building of this de device uh, they're the holes for the switches now you're going to have four switches down the side and they are going to switch in inductors. And the way that happens is this is the circuit itself. Care of Peter Parker VK3YE. So go to the video link in the description below this video to find all the information you need about building this device and how it works. But basically, the switches will short circuit across the inductors you don't want. So if you want none of the inductors, you would close all of the switches. You'd have a direct short. And as you can see here, what's going to happen is each of the inductors will be in the bottom section of the switch. We're gonna solder our coil on the switch. I'm applying about 10 seconds worth of heat to make sure that we uh, burn away the enamel that's on this wire. 10, nine, eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And the way we'll be able to tell if that's actually burnt away is when I flick the switch so that uh, this should be open circuit, uh, if we have continuity, we'll know that the, uh, the inductor is actually connected across there. We'll put our meter in uh, continuity mode. And between those two points there, we should have a closed circuit and we don't. So we know that uh, our enamel is not uh, eaten away. So at the moment, that uh, switch should be now closed. And then, when we, and then when we open the switch the other way, we should still have a short circuit and we don't, which means the enamel has not been burned away. This is why it's always a good idea to either scrape or check. Okay, so we expect it short then. Now we expect it short if it's if the enamel's gone. And the enamel is now gone. We are getting close to completion. That's our box with our switchable inductors. And you can see, I don't know if you can see it there, but uh, there's a little uh, blue capacitor there. That's the extra capacitor. The way this first switch works, which is the one micro Henry switch, when it's all the way up, we have uh, no extra capacitance and we've also switched out the inductor. When we go to the mid position, we have the one micro Henry, so we've selected that um, inductor, but we don't have the capacitor. When we go all the way uh, down, we have the extra capacitance and the one micro Henry. And that's the only switch that has a mid position on it to allow that uh, capacitor to come in and out of circuit. The rest of these up is the, the inductor is not switched in and down we are switching the, conduct, the inductor into the circuit. So if we want all of those inductors in, we push all the switches down. If we want all the inductors out, we push them all up. Like I said, that first position switch is the only one that's uh, a little bit different. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the AOE QRP Transmatch. So we are measuring out a non-resonant end-fed antenna. And when we say non-resonant, we don't mean it's not resonant on any frequency. Obviously, any piece of wire is going to have a resonant point. So what we're, what we're trying to do is stay away from the resonant ham bands. So frequencies that are ham bands, we don't want to be resonant on them. And that's all to do with making sure that uh, we end up with a feed point that is tunable. Now, if you'd like to find out more about this type of antenna, I am not the person to find out about it because uh, I'm a clown. The 
distance or the length of antenna that I'm going to be using is 10.82 meters. And the counterpoint is going to be 5.182 meters. So 10.82 meters for the wire, 5.182 meters. Now these distances have been calculated by people who are way smarter than me and have been found to work. So I'm hoping it'll work for me. filming this in the wrong order because I've already started taking the whole assembly apart. I've got to go shopping. I'm going to cook dinner tonight. Domestic realities. But uh, what I've done is I've taken a PVC pipe, the other half of the PVC pipe. I had a six metre length. That's about three metres. It's sitting next to my vertical L. But uh, what I did was I had the wire coming off the top of the PVC pipe and it was coming down and going over to our setup over here. So this is the uh, portable setup that we've managed to put together. Certainly not uh, a finished product, it's a work in progress. We have, I'll just show you uh, the items, a sealed lead acid cell, uh, bought that at JCAR, El Cheapo, heavy, so I'm gonna need to go for something lighter if I go trekking, but uh, just for uh, throwing in a backpack, I should be getting away with that all right. Um, the key, obviously we need to go for a smaller key at some point in time too, but uh, I'll, I'll seek comfort over uh, ease of carrying for the, for the time being until I start doing some SOTA and whatnot. Uh, we have the finished transmatch and I've got my Nano VNA there just checking it out and we're running it into uh, the QMX later on. I've transmitted on the QMX, uh, even though the the LED, I need to put a cover or something on that to see it in daylight, as I was told to do. Uh, but the thing is, SWR and power meter and SWR protection on the QMX is more than good enough. I tune for maximum noise, and then I look at the meter and uh, adjust from there, and it's been fine. I'll tell you how this antenna has turned out. It's set up very badly like it is now, not as high as it should be. Um, 40 meters is good. Um, yeah, one is to one um, point something SWR, as is 30 meters, 20 meters, and 17 meters now. 15 meters was about 1.3 is to one, and then unfortunately, 12 meters and 10 meters they're not above three but they're only a little bit below three so i think five bands is is a win for one antenna how it performs on those bands is anyone's guess i guess i will be finding out when i head off into the field pardon the inevitable wind noise while i'm out here it is a freezing cold day in sydney <laughs> i'm freezing my buns off uh just trying to show you the display on the uh, the, the QMX here. Um, on the right hand side, you got your battery, and when you hit transmit, at the moment you can see the little signal meter there. Um, but when you hit transmit, what happens is um, you'll see on the top is the power, and on the bottom is the SWR. So you want your power to go up and your SWR to stay low. So when I hit transmit, you can see there. Um, I think we've got about three and a half watts there. I'm pretty sure the battery is pretty low, um, which is causing a lower transmit value. But you can see there that we've got one is to 1.2, because um, you've only got one column of SWR on the bottom there. So on the bottom, you can see that one column, that's one is to 1.2 SWR. As you see, more of those columns, it'll be one is to 1.4 if there's two of them, one is to 1.6 if there's three of them, etc., etc. And the maximum for this it will be three. If it hits three, it will shut down transmit, and I'll have to reset the rig to uh, to get it to work. Uh, you can disable that if you want to, and you do that at your own peril. <laughs> so that is the uh, SWI meter. So that works really well as well. Wow, still here. Thank you for watching the entire episode. I've had a lot of fun making that transmatch and I'm hoping in future episodes you'll see it out in the field and operating. 73 and I will see you in the next episode of The Art of Engineering.